Do you purchase a lot of precious metals? With people out of work due to COVID, it creates a lot of desperation. Package thefts are on the rise with folks roaming around, stealing what's on people's porches and out of their mailboxes. And if you buy a lot of precious metals, it might be a good idea to get a post office box. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Campbell's Coins. In this episode, I'm gonna go over why you need one, how to set one up, and the pros and cons I've run into since owning a P.O. box. Coming up. Let's rewind back a bit. Why did I get a P.O. box? I buy precious metals and I work full time meaning that I'm not at home when those are being delivered. So they attempt to put them in my mailbox or they leave them on my porch. Most of the time, if the package is too big, they leave it on my porch. And I don't want hundreds, even thousands of dollars sitting on my porch. Although I will say, if it is that high of a price package, it usually comes with a signature required. So I'd have to go to the post office on Saturday or during a lunch break and wait to sign for my package. I was done with all that. I didn't like the feeling of my packages being unsecure and I didn't like waiting a week to get them. So I set up a PO box. I will go over how to do that a little later in this video. Let's not sugarcoat it. One of the primary reasons for getting a PO box is theft. Package thefts are always a reality, but more so during desperate times. A P.O. box cuts down on the risk of theft, but it doesn't eliminate it. And that's sadly because postal employees steal too. So it's important to minimize that risk as well, as much as possible by making your name on the P.O. box something that doesn't scream precious metals, coins, collectibles, etc. All of those names target you for theft. When I set mine up, I stupidly put my business name, Campbell's Coins, as part of the name. That just is not a good idea. If they see packages coming into that box with a return address that has a bullion type name or something along those lines, it just might be really tempting to them to take. On a side note, this is why it is incredibly important to not ship precious metals with any type of name that could give away what's inside. Setting up a P.O. box is relatively easy. You can do most of it on the USPS website. You create an account, log in, fill in your personal information, name, address, phone number, and additional people you want to have access to your box. It's gonna ask if you want a signature on file. I would select no, and I will explain why in a little bit. You will select the size of the P.O. box that you want, and you'll pay. The cost is gonna vary based on the size of the box that you choose and the location of the post office box. A P.O. box in New York City is going to cost more than that same size box in Bismarck, North Dakota. I recommend selecting a small to medium sized box at the most because if a package does not fit, the post office will put the larger package in a bigger locker and leave the key to that locker in your box to pick up at your convenience. Why pay more for a larger box when they will supply one to you at no additional cost? Now, this locker does not become just your locker. It's used for everyone, but until you pick up your package, you know, it's yours. Once you've completed all those steps, you take all the necessary information and paperwork to the post office, to pick up your key. It's a pretty simple process. Let's go over the pros and cons for owning a post office box. I'm gonna start off with the cons first. First and foremost for me is price. I pay about 268 a year for my box. Last year I think I paid 238, so it's increased 30 bucks in the last year. Um, they give you the option to sign up for six months at a time, but if you sign up for a full year, you get an extra month for free. Signature on file is a joke. I did this the first year I had my box and 80% of the time I had to sign for the package anyways. 
Even after bringing up my concerns to them, it still happened, just a little less frequently. But having a signature on file is a horrible idea. Why? Because they can have a signature required package and say it was delivered, but they don't actually deliver it. There was this incident a couple of months ago when COVID first happened. I checked my tracking and I noticed that a package was delivered at 11 a.m. I went over after work. It was about 4.45. I went to my box, opened it, and nothing was inside. Not even a note asking for you to see an employee. Oh, on a side note, if it is a signature required item, they will still leave those little notes, uh, like the ones you, they leave on your front door, the sorry we missed you, uh, asking for a signature and to come to the post office. But the benefit of having a PO box is you're already at the post office. It kind of sucks though, if it's after hours and you see that, then you have to come back the next day to pick it up. Back to the story though. At this time, I didn't have a note and my tracking said it was delivered. It seems pretty sketchy, right? So I went to the area for pickups. I gave them the tracking number and I showed them on my phone that it was delivered to my box. They found it after 10 minutes of looking and said it was weird that it wasn't in my box. Yeah, that's pretty weird. Those incidences are few and far between though. And I would imagine that if you kept your box more anonymous than I did, that you may have less of an issue, especially if somebody is shipping to you. If they are keeping things fairly anonymous, then that will help you as well and not drawing attention to what's in the package. There are a few and pretty good pros to owning a PO box. Number one, it is way more secure than sitting on your porch or in your mailbox. If you're worried about theft from your house or your mailbox, then the PO box is for you. Second, you can literally go in at any time to pick up your packages. You don't have to worry about normal business hours unless you have to sign for something. Third, and something huge that I haven't touched on, it keeps your residents anonymous if you do a lot of buying and selling online. You do not know who will use your information against you. I have heard horror stories of people threatening to kill others over an eBay deal. Those people threatening had their home address. I've heard stories of folks being robbed because they post about being on vacation and others knew precious metals were there. That's a good point that I will touch on at another point in time. You shouldn't keep precious metals at your house. Keep them in a secure off-site location. I will make another video about storing and securing your precious metals, and I will cover that, but it will be at a later date. One just never knows who could wind up with your home address if you give it out to somebody. I hope all this information has helped. If I have missed something, some vital piece of information, feel free to put it in the comments below. That helps other people and we're all here to learn, right? Thank you all so much for watching. This is Campbell's Coins and that is my two cents.